Met Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. The world that we live in has many hurting people. And the truth is we're some of them. <laughs> all right? And one of the things that's true of all of the scripture is this. We humans tend to want to spend time on things that don't really matter. And uh, what I want to point out is not that washing hands is bad, but when the presence of God is there, perhaps these are not the questions we might ask. And so I want to help us for a moment focus intentionally on kind of where we are and what it is that we need and how we might go about being different when we're in the presence of God. I wonder a couple of things because you've all come here and we, this is the way it is every Sunday, we all come to church uh, and whether we've been here a long time or it's our first time back, we come with a whole story uh, about our life with us, don't we? I mean, we bring the phone calls, the people, the relationships, the good things of the week, the bad things of the week, and sometimes we come with deep, deep pain. Sometimes we arrive here so needful <laughs> of just a little bit of grace, uh, and the truth is we do almost anything to get it. And the church, uh, I feel, in this time, has fretted a lot, not about offering the grace and the love of God, but talking about things that don't really matter in the scheme of it. And so that has brought about division and more pain and more trauma. But I ask you, have you ever wanted something so much <laughs> that you would give anything to have it? I wonder if you are at a place in your life maybe today or have been where there was pain or suffering or some relationship was just so bad. I mean, it just was so bad. You would do anything to have it healed. James and Jesus point out, that's our work. That's true religion is to help. Too often, though, we are the petitioner with only a few words who doesn't listen. And we find it difficult when we're presented with the fact that we do have suffering and pain in the world, aren't we? Like, maybe we're doing great, but even the news of the day, <laughs> we wonder how can God go about letting that happen, right? Right? And so we get so convinced that either, either the world itself is just filled with randomness, right? That it's just random and God is not present at all. Or we answer our life's hardest questions uh, by suggesting that what is true is that God doesn't care. And that God actually may be persecuting us for something we've done wrong. Those tend to be the two options. I'm blessed today or I'm being punished today. Because, you know, the God has brought this about. And we, we legitimize the suffering by saying, well, uh, suffering is good. I mean, think about it for a second, right? Think about art. Like, think about how we talk about art. The suffering artist, the Van Gogh. Uh, of art, right? Like, I've, I'm suffering and so I create beautiful... No, that's hogwash, you all. That's not even Christian. That's not even Christian. And what we realize quickly 
is that we are living a life so focused on ourselves almost every day that we can't get outside of our heads. And so consequently, we don't have a vision of what God's doing. The Christian answer is that God is love, God is present, God is doing something even when we can't see it. And we are to come into presence with God in such a way that we know that. And we don't think something like God has need of him or her in heaven. No. Cancer kills people. <laughs> right? People die. People die. Because why? We all die. It's not news. Right? But we act as if this is somehow a disturbance in God's grace. But it isn't. Not at all. God is present. But we have to face the fact that this world we live in, including illness and death, is not the creation God intended. And that's hard for us. Because we like to twist the James thing a little bit to say we can make it better. Serving people and helping people does improve the world. It does make the world look more like God's world. But it doesn't take away the suffering. It doesn't stop the death. It doesn't stop the cancer. Sometimes cancer wins. No matter how hard we, we fight it. But God's presence on the cross teaches us that God is present in that suffering and that God would wish that this world did not have death and in fact has come into the world to teach us, to help us understand it's not about washing hands. It's about seeing that suffering does not have the last word. It's about understanding that death, no matter when it comes in our lives, is not the end. That, in fact, Jesus has bridged the gap between heaven and earth in such a way that we continue. Now, if you ask me what that means, I'm going to tell you, I don't know. And next week, you can ask these two over here all about it. <laughs> right? But what I'm saying is that at the core, there is a relationship with God that does not end. And because it doesn't end when I'm in relationship with God, that relationship with whoever has passed on does not end, but continues. And in fact, when we think about this table and this space, just as Abraham walked out into the desert and set up altars in the world, that is what we are doing here and participating in a sacramental prayer life with God that reminds us constantly this is not the table, but the end of the table. And that when we come forward and gather and put our hands out for a little bit of grace, what we are actually participating in is the infinite love, passion, and care of Jesus. And that this table is the end and stretches off into the infin infinite. Both backwards, which is quite unique for Episcopalians and others, but it goes backwards to Christ's first table and goes forwards to God's final table. And so here, when we gather, we truly are present with the saints and everyone who has gone before us. But what's hard about this, and I just want to be honest with you, is that we don't spend enough time with Jesus to realize that. We think we can do this once a week. 
but the practice of the presence of God in prayer and meditation on a regular basis daily leads us into personal contact with the divine daily and in knowing that we are not the center of the world and that our concerns are not the center of the world, we are then drawn to others to care for them when they are sick or dying, to feed them when they are hungry, like you all do here, to care for them, to make space for them, to welcome them. It teaches us daily that this is not all there is in life. But if this is the only practice of good religion, as the Collect says, it is not going to help you in the moments and times when you suffer deep loss. It is a practice that teaches us that there is more to life than what we see, that we do not have the answer for all things, and that we get tied up in the minutia Good and true religion is not about doing worship right. It is about doing it well. In such a way that our prayers, our daily and weekly prayers, come to a moment, a crescendo, a high point at this table where we are praying with others and literally changing our relationship as we do so. And then the task is to live differently, to be different human beings because of this deep, deep relationship. People are going to tell you all kinds of stuff, but I am here to tell you that God is love. God is present. God is there to reach out God's hand and take us when this world is no longer ours and bring us into the kingdom of God where no powers, as Paul says, or principalities or fallenness, nothing in this world will ever, ever separate us from the love of God again. And that is true religion. And may it inspire you both to be present with God on a regular basis so that you may know this truth and withstand the assaults of this world and celebrate lives well lived and good relationships and be sad together and know that God is also hope for in the end this world does not have the last word in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen, Amen. and now uh, please stand with me and let us proclaim the faith of the church and uh, uh, reaffirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.